This is Tunnel Vision, Tideway's brand new channel dedicated to bringing you behind the scenes on London's new super sewer. My name's Taylor Gill and I'm part of the team building London's Super Sewer. Right now, London relies on a 150-year-old sewer system built for a population less than half its current size. It was designed by Sir Joseph Bazalgette for 4 million people. Today, though, there are nearly 9 million people living in London. That system, despite being in remarkably good condition, simply cannot cope. When it rains, even just a bit, that rainwater floods the sewer system, mixes with raw sewage and spills directly into the River Thames. Anything that goes down the toilet in London could well end up in this river. That's where Tideway comes in. We're building a giant sewer tunnel to intercept those nasty overflows and clean up our river. We have 24 construction sites, stretching from Acton in West London, all the way out to Abbey Mills pumping station in the east. And they're all connected in one way or another to the super sewer, a 25 kilometer, 7.2 meter wide tunnel that will clean up this river. With a huge team of world-class engineers from all corners of the globe, we're cleaning up the Thames for its inhabitants, its wildlife and for you. Victoria Embankment, stretching from Blackfriars Bridge to Westminster, was built to house Baseljet's sewer system. We're building on that legacy by creating seven new areas of public space. Each month on Tunnel Vision, we'll show you how we're getting on. We'll show you the sites, some of the amazing engineering, as well as the people working on this project. Later, we'll show you our tunnel boring machines, giant diggers we're using to create the tunnel itself. But we're going to start by looking at Blackfriars, one of the most important sites on the Tideway project. Slap bang in the heart of London, in a part of the city rich with history. This site is officially known as Blackfriars Bridge Foreshore, and it's here for a very specific reason, the River Fleet. The River Fleet is a tributary of the River Thames. There are lots of these in central London, but most of them have been built over. We call these London's Lost Rivers. Right here, beneath Blackfriars Bridge, is where the River Fleet meets the Thames. You can't see it from the street, but many years ago, the Fleet was a decent-sized tributary. Merchants, especially from the coal industry, would use it for transport. In fact, if you walk a few minutes north of Blackfriars Bridge, you'll find a small side road called Old Sea Coal Lane. As London grew, more and more of the Fleet was built over. Sir Joseph Bazalgette, the mastermind behind London's sewer network, even used it, along with many other lost rivers, as part of his drainage network. Today, all that's left of the River Fleet is that discharge point in the river wall. In a typical year, the Fleet CSO discharges more than half a million tonnes of raw sewage directly into the Thames. Let's go and meet the team at Blackfriars to find out some more. sites have a very similar role or purpose which is to redirect these outflows to the treatment works at Beckton uh, where the sewage is then treated and then runs through the system all over again. Blackfriars is one of the larger sites on the Tideway project but we have an added complication which is that we're in the centre of London so being able to shut down roads or do anything in the centre of London is very hard to achieve. The biggest problem that we have is the Blackfriars Bridge here. Uh, one of the sewage outflows runs under the bridge. Uh, we need to redirect that water to our shaft which leads into the tunnel. So we proposed an idea where basically we would build our structure in essentially what's a dry dock, uh, which is our coffer dam, uh, and then we will open it up once it's built and we will float it into its position uh, where then it will be able to redirect that water to the shaft and into the main tunnel. For today's operation we've built this in situ concrete culvert that we're floating out to, to connect to the river wall to, to divert the flow from the fleet and on and into the into the shaft. It's about 100 metres long, 1200 cubic metres of concrete, weighs 3700 tonnes. The reason we had to float out the culvert is that the piling the coffer dam here could come no further east because of the constraints of the Waterloo and City line which, which runs under where we're, we're standing at the moment and as well as that then you couldn't pile under the under the bridge because of the headroom you couldn't get the piling rigs in the bridge in under, under there so we had to um, 
remove the soft material from the riverbed, uh, backfill it with stone and a concrete mattress, and then and prepare it then to lay down this floated, this floated structure on top of it, so it just lays on the riverbed. Everybody here just works and pulls together. It's a fantastic, fantastic site. It's very, very complex, and uh, you know it's testament to the lads here that the, the success of today's operation, the floating of the culvert, and now bringing it out tonight. It's, you know, it's a great achievement. Everything worked very smoothly, there was no hiccups, went exactly as planned. It's, it's opening up a load of work now, we have the two more in situ culverts to build in the cofferdam and then the shaft to sink, to finish the sinking off and yeah, it's, it's all go. So that's Blackfriars, just one piece of the Tideway puzzle. Tideway is massively expanding London's sewer network and to do this, we're using six giant tunnel boring machines, or TBMs as we call them on site. Belgian engineer Henry Joseph Maus invented the first hard rock tunnel boring machine back in 1845. Around the same time, Marc Brunel developed the shield concept, a technique quite literally groundbreaking to provide a much needed structure to protect his men from cave-ins during excavation of the first ever tunnel underneath the River Thames. Fast forward to 2020 and the tunnel boring machine has evolved into a gargantuan feat of mechanical engineering. They make digging tunnels much easier by using mechanics rather than pickaxes, but the core principles still owe a debt to Maus and Brunel. TBMs are now up to four times faster than the archaic drill and blast methods, and most TBMs are bespoke, designed to suit specific project specifications. So the cut ahead of the TBM has different types of teeth on it to help excavate the muck. We've got rippers around the edge, we've got scrapers through the middle, and you can see there's a kind of bit jutting out in the middle, that's the nose cone. Up to 25 crew members can be needed to operate a TBM at any given time, and our machines will work around the clock, excavating up to 8 metres per day. Transporting a TBM to one of our sites involves many logistical complexities and the scale of engineering expertise needed to execute it successfully can't be overstated. Take for example TBM Selena, who was delivered to our Chambers Wharf site earlier this year. Selena was delivered using a giant vessel called the Skylift 3000, travelling over 800 kilometres via waterways from the port of Kiel in Germany. Selena will dig out the final 5.5 kilometre stretch of London's 25 kilometre super sewer. Finally on Tunnel Vision, we took to the streets to find out how much Londoners know about Tideway and how much sewage they think goes into their river. Would you go for a swim in the River Thames? No, I would not. No. Why wouldn't you? Because it's full of sewage. I just would be concerned about the amount of stuff that's in the Thames. Yeah. What sort of stuff? Oh God, you know what people are like. I think about it, especially in these temperatures. No. <laughs> uh, possibly. No, no, I've never thought it was clean enough. No. no. Uh, never, I would, I've never thought about it, I don't think I'd do it. On a day like today, I guess I would, I'd probably dip the toes in maybe? Yeah, I just wouldn't do it because I know it's contaminated. Give me a guess how many toilet flushes a year you think end up in the River Thames? Untreated toilet flushes into the Thames every year? Um, 500 million. 500,000? I don't know, it's a lot. 100 million. A million. A million? 10 million? I'm would it shock you if I said 8 billion toilet flushes a year end up in the River Thames? Ooh, okay, that's, that's, that's horrible. That's icky, that's very icky. 8 billion. 8 billion toilet flushes. Nobody wants to swim in that. Do you know that there is actually a super sewer being built underneath the river? I did, yeah. yeah. Uh, I did hear that, that there was a tunnel being built to uh, try and get it clean, yes, yeah, so I was aware of that. I did not know that. I've heard of rumours of some big tunnel going under the river, but I don't know too much about it. Yeah, I have heard of it, yeah. No, no. no. Sewer or something? Yeah. There's a super sewer! We have a fan! See, this is what kills us. No one's heard of it. It's because it's underground. But check it out. Tunnel Vision. It's on YouTube. We'll do. Tunnel Vision. Tunnel Vision. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. Let us know in the comments below what you want to see in the future and join us next time on Tunnel Vision.